Hello again, it's Rob from failedmuso.com. Welcome along to another in our series of video reviews of various instruments and sample libraries. And this time round, we've got the latest one from UVI, which is the Urcam Prepared Piano. Uh, so let's um, start explaining, first of all, what one of those is. Well, Urcam, and I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce this properly in, in the French, uh, but it's basically the Institute of Research and Coordination to Acoustic uh, Acoustics and Music. Um, is It was founded in 1969, or it was commissioned in 1969, and opened in 1977. Uh, it was commissioned by the then President of France, Georges Pompidou, and is set up as part of the Pompidou Centre in, in Paris itself, and is pretty much dedicated to... Uh, not only researching the science around music and sound, but also uh, avant-garde electroacoustical art as well. So it's it's really um, kind of at the cutting edge, the research of new different ways of making sounds. It uh, has many studios and echoic chambers. Um, it's a compositional base for many avant-garde uh, composers, including some of the greatest of our of our time. And it's also uh, a place that develops hardware and software uh, for the betterment of music. And this is an instrument that goes some way to being a historical record and also um, giving people the opportunity to play a prepared piano, which is something that takes um, a lot of time and uh, an access to a very good piano, of course. So what is a prepared piano? How, how does this work? Well, a prepared piano in its uh, sort of accepted sense is a piano whose strings have been prepared by uh, manipulation to sound different to what they would normally sound uh, when played in a regular fashion. So for example, you can take coins and insert them into the strings because most piano notes on the piano have, um, especially you know the bulk of them are, are three strings that provide you with the note. Well, you can take a coin and slot that in there quite nicely, and what it does is it mutes the sound, it dampens the sound, it uh, adds uh, a percussive nature to the sound, a rattling to the sound. You can use screws, you can use nuts and bolts, uh, rubber erasers. Uh, have been inserted in there to dampen things down, paper, tin foil, you name it, experimenting with putting these things around the strings to make them sound different to what they normally would sound is what essentially is a prepared piano. And it was made very famous by the great uh, avant-garde composer and experimentalist John Cage. Uh, in 1938, he started messing around with preparing a piano. It's not the first time that pianos have been prepared in such a way. Um, over the centuries, people have dabbled with affecting what a piano does to get it to do something slightly different. Because as I say in my uh, my written review over at failedmuso.com forward slash blog, the piano essentially, with all due respect, is a one-trick pony. It has one sound. Uh, it's 88 note polyphonic, although you will need about nine people to achieve full 88 note polyphony. Um, but it's monotimbral. It only plays one sound, um, and it it does it so well. It's it's a very rare instrument. It's become the symbol of of music, really. Wherever you go, a piano is known, whether it's in Western music or Eastern music. Uh, pianos are known all over the world, uh, and it's they're, they're pretty prevalent, but of course, a real piano is very large, physical, loud, and expensive, and not everyone can have a proper piano in their home, be it an upright or a grand or a baby grand. So to actually get into the art of preparing a piano, you're going to need access to a proper piano, and we just don't all have those. So why not take modern technology and try and recreate that? somehow and this is what UVI have done on the 100th anniversary of John Cage's birth which was September 5th this year. So UVI who are quite close with the uh, Urcam Institute in Paris went over and uh, they took a Yamaha C7 Grand which is a, an extremely good and well-made grand piano and they proceeded to sample the hell out of it and use different preparations and record 
every string prepared in every single way so that we as the users can now take this sample library and create our own prepared piano prepared exactly how we want with all the different preparations there for us to choose from so that's essentially what it is it's um, a full prepared piano with double layering and multi miking and all sorts of different things and I think that John Cage would probably approve so without further ado let's go and have a look and see exactly what this looks like in a sample library now we're using this in Motu's Mac 5.3 sampler and we're just going to go in and call up the Urcan prepared piano as you'll see straight up we've got a number of programs available to us and they're all fairly self-explanatory so if we work up from the bottom we'll see that we've got sustain screw screw and nut scratch piano phone mutes harmonics glass slides eraser ebo coins clothespin and bow these are all the preparations so bow for example is where the strings are played with a bow rather than the hammer of the piano clothespin is where the clothespin is clipped onto the strings that on that particular note coins are where coins are inserted erasers rubber erasers um, mobile phones we have mobile phones inserted into uh, these strings and sampled scratching so where we're scratching across the rough edge of the string screws and nuts pretty much self-explanatory putting screws in between the, the strings to get certain tones out of them and then the sustain is just the, the regular piano sustain without any uh, preparation built in the top three here allow us to select the different mic settings so we have all mics all DPA mics and all Sherps mics now if I'm correct the DPA mics were placed where the piano player would sit at the keyboard the Sherps mics were placed around the actual resonance chamber of the piano itself at a at a fairly close distance but not too close you know, sort of getting the ambience so we can actually choose any of these preparations any of these mic settings but we can also mess around with these once we've got the instrument loaded now there is a significant amount of data in here there's well over 10,000 possibly over 12,000 samples in this library alone if we load up all mics we get absolutely everything uh, and it's quite huge um, so I'm just going to stick with just um, opening up um, well actually no let's let's go for it shall we let's let's see how this works out because there's about 6,000 odd key groups here but um, we're running on a fairly decent machine this is running on a Windows 7 Pro machine uh, with an i5 processor it's um, 4 gig of memory so it's not too shabby it's not the fastest in the world but it should be able to handle this and uh, our audio is uh, being processed uh, through uh, a couple of audio interfaces here and I think the, the 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 Mac 5 is actually going through a Behringer audio interface now. Some of you might turn your nose up at that, uh, but it actually works very well. Uh, and then uh, all of this is then being processed through a propeller head balance unit as we speak. So there we go. It's all loaded up, and we can now go and have a look at the user interface, which is typically gorgeous he says as we just wait for that to appear ignore this little message there that's just because it's a development version so here we go this is what the Urcan prepared piano interface looks like and uh, at first I looked at this and thought mm, okay not quite sure what's going on here but you see a yellow area here on the keyboard and this denotes what section of the strings are being displayed here and we can also see this because under each of these strings we see the actual note uh, number okay so currently we're working from C3 to B3 so each of these strings uh, represents one of the notes and if I hit one of these arrows either side here we'll go down a set or we can go back up a set okay that makes sense then at the top here is our first preparation layer so we can ha actually have two layers of preparations 
So we choose here, and as you can see, we've got quite a selection, and it's gone right out of shot here. But uh, we've we've got everything from screws and nuts, clothespins, ebos, glass slides, mutes, mallets, erasers, etc., etc. We can choose any one of those. We can then change the volume for each of those layers, and also we can affect the tuning for that particular preparation. And we can do this for every single note in the piano. Every single individual note on the piano can have its own set of or pair of preparations and each of those preparations has its own volume and tuning control. So first, first up there, that's a lot of control, a great degree of control over the preparations. So we've currently got these set up as normal. This is just sustain. So that's just the piano, that's the C7 Grand, completely unaffected, recorded dry. Down here, we haven't got any preparations in, but we can just drop this menu down and choose one. So if we want to maybe have a sustain with a stick, then that's going to add a kind of percussive sound here, compared to the note next to it, which is D3, which is normal. But now we're hitting it with a stick, as well as the hammer. So you can hear the difference already. This is one preparation. We can choose something else. Let's choose, for example, a screw. So we'll pop a screw in there, and this is what that sounds like. It sounds maybe not very nice, kind of dissonant and strange. Well, why did they prepare pianos? What was the purpose? If it's going to sound a little bit weird, are they just doing it for the sake of avant-garde? Or are they doing it maybe for some greater musical sense? Well, if you imagine nowadays uh, you can have an instrument and across the keyboard of that instrument you can assign any sound that you want. You can go out and buy a library of sounds, you can use the preset sounds, you can create your own sounds, but pretty much, within reason, you can have absolutely any sound you want across your synthesizer keyboard. With a piano, back in the 30s, that wasn't possible. So, by preparing the uh, strings in such a way, you could get percussive sounds. So imagine now that you are playing your synthesizer and in the bottom lower octave range of your keyboard, you've got a kick drum and a snare and some hi-hats and some cymbals and some percussion. And you can play those out with your left hand, whilst with your right hand you can play chords or melodies. That's exactly what a prepared piano was able to do. Of course it was used in far more musical ways, it wasn't just to provide a rhythm section down on the lower end of the keys, but it allowed people to change sounds using physical objects, and that's all it was. Now, UVI have gone one step further because they've added in physical objects that didn't exist when John Cage was doing this um, between 1938 and 1953, which is pretty much his prepared piano compositional period. What they've added are things like mobile phones. As I've said before, we can choose um, a mobile phone to go and be wedged into the strings. And that sounds like this. Which is an interesting sound because it still retains the, the note from the piano. But now we've got this kind of percussive with a bit of a delay on it's it's quite pleasant actually um and we can go through and we can change all of these we can put some harmonics on even and uh, we can listen to how that sounds with harmonics not really noticing too much going on there some of these are really standout sounds you can't tell that it's actually a piano and some of them very very subtle indeed if you're not sure on what settings you want then you can go up here and we've got three presets. We have preset one, which is for this first layer, and preset two, which is for the second layer. And then we've also got presets one and two, which gives some combination. And you can drop these down. As you can see, there are some John Cage presets 
put in here so that if you want to play Bacchanal, um, there's a preparation for that. If you want to play Sonata 5 from uh, one of his prepared piano sonatas, it's in there as well. And of course, you can quite easily get hold of John Cage's preparation pages and prepare a piano exactly how you want it. And if you go to any of the other presets, then you'll see that there's all different types that you can have. And also, interestingly, there's a little dice next to each of these. And by clicking on the dice, it goes off and randomly chooses a preparation for you and then loads it up. Now you'll notice that this is taking a little while to load up. And you've got to remember, there is a lot of data here. So that little spinny wheel gives us that. And there we go. There's our first random preparation. good is that to you musically only you'll be able to tell and I'm sure that some of you will be watching this and thinking well pff, that's absolutely no use to me at all but there are other people out there saying oh my god that's just brilliant because I can now completely change the sound of a piano and you can use this for all sorts of different things so um, let's scale down here and go through and we can see that as we get lower we go from three strings per note to two strings, just as it does in a real piano, all the way down to one string down the lower end. And if we go right up to the top, then we see that we've got everything right up to note 88 on the keyboard, just there. So that's how you prepare your piano. And you can choose any one of these presets, or you can take a random hit with a dice and set up your own if you want to. You can mess around do exactly what you want. The I, I didn't try and work out the configurations, the possible configurations. There are going to be thousands, if not tens, if not hundreds of thousands of different combinations. Somebody do the math, post it on the comments, let me know. What about effects? Well, let's first of all, let's, um, well, let's go to the effects page. And very, two very simple proprietary effects are set up with this. Of course, you can, if you want to, bolt on any number of effects that come with either Mac 5 or UVI Workstation, which this will work in both. But the two proprietary effects that come with this are Delay and Reverb. And they, they're defaulted to off, but we can turn them on. So let's just... Um, that's dry. And if we turn on the Reverb... And of course we've got a dry and wet mix. And we can mess around with size, decay, crossover, and it's all in there. And we can also put some delay in there as well. Put the delay on. So you can get some really interesting sounds using just the proprietary effects as well. Let's just turn those off now. So very, very simple. Settings. OK, this is where we can start tinkering a little bit more. We've got here the two microphone settings. So it defaults to whatever the preset uh, has here. So we've got mic one and mic two. We can turn these on and off and we can reduce uh, and affect the volume uh, accordingly. Down here, we've got the um, amplitude envelope, so ADSR, and we can also choose presets. So there's a bowed one, there's a mutes one, and there's an ebo one as well. We can mess around with those. The global parameters uh, cover release volume, resonance, tone, and global tuning. There is a dynamics and a velocity curve setting here, and we can also assign the unicorder and the sustenuto pedal settings to various MIDI CC numbers. Uh, they're currently set at 67 and 66, respectively. So if you have multiple pedals, you can set it up to control those, or of course you can direct that to any MIDI controller that transmits MIDI CC messages. So if you're using a maybe a, a keyboard with pads or switches, you can set it up to, to trigger those there. Finally, over here on the right, we've got um, bar hits. Bar hits, if you look at, open up a grand piano, all the strings are mounted on a cast iron frame which keeps the tension in place and 
that's exactly what it is. So they're saying here you can choose to have your bar hits by hand, by small stick, or by mallet. And you've got a preview button just here. Okay. And extra length, CC1 and CC2. Sounds a little bit smutty, but I assure you it's not. If you look again, look, at, look inside the piano, there are lengths of each of the piano strings that aren't actually used to make the note. They are stretched out beyond the two tuning points at the top and the bottom of the frame. And in a prepared piano piece, it's often required that you strum those. They have no real musical value at all. They just, they just sound like bits of wire being strummed with whatever you're strumming with. CC1 and CC2 allows you to control and assign the uh, the messages and also the level of the volume of that particular effect. So if you want to uh, to hear those, assign your MIDI CC controller number and then you can uh, change the volumes uh, with these controls here. It's all pretty simple stuff and it works brilliantly well if this is what you want. And this is a very specialist library. I'm not going to play a piece of music on this I'm not going to try because A I can't play piano very well at all and B prepared piano takes some doing uh, when it comes to playing because you have to know where everything is and so I'm not even going to attempt to play you some stuff um, I will go back in just a second and, and let you listen to some of the preparations but I would thoroughly recommend that you go to my written review, which is over at failmuso.com forward slash blog. Do a search for Urcan Prepared Piano, and you'll find in my review there a link to UVI's SoundCloud page. Or you can just go and find UVI's SoundCloud page and listen to some of the demos that they've got posted up there because they are far better and far more representative than anything that I could attempt to do. So I'm not even going to embarrass myself by doing that. Um, so let's just quickly go through here and find some notes that have got different things going on so here we've got like paper this is um, paper here and I'll see if I can get up here on my keyboard also just all kinds of different random sounds some of them quite musical with this extra kind of percussive quality and some of them will just uh, not make any sense at all just really very strange stuff but you know in when in context it obviously sounds a lot better than it um it does here with my sort of ham-fisted demonstrations. Um, one, of, one of my particular uh, favourites is uh, where we use the Ebo, um, and I'm just trying to find uh, a preset here that uses that. Uh, let's have a look through, and let's, let's choose all sustain, and then we'll we'll stick some Ebo on there as well. Just reset that through. As you can see, again, because of the, the length of time it takes to load up you know, the full set of samples, again, I wouldn't necessarily trust this as a full live instrument, um, unless you want to program your presets and then have them preloaded. I'd, I'd recommend that you have a, uh, a well-specified machine to do that with. Okay, so let's, uh, let's find... Okay, so... Let's change this to um, an Ebo. Let's get rid of that harmonic on there as well. So that's the sound of, uh, of a piano string being played with an Ebo, which vibrates the string using um, ultrasound compare that to the regular
loads of interesting things. I mean, I really could spend a huge amount of time going through all of these, but the, the level of combinations here are just ridiculous. So please go and listen to the demos. And uh, while you're at it, if you've got a, a service like Spotify or Deezer, um, go and search out some of John Cage's music and, and really get a grip on this. I think, as I said, said in the review, this is quite an expensive library. It's $399 or 399 euros, or a little bit cheaper if you buy the DVD, which I think is about 388 And I say in the review that that's very expensive, and I don't think that's a bad thing because I think it's a good filter as well because I think anybody that, that approaches this and is looking for a piano library and scanning through all the different ones that are out there and they see this one they'll look at the price and think no nope, not even going to touch that um without even knowing what a prepared piano is they might think it's a well polished piano a well tuned piano but of course it's anything but um also I do have uh, one reservation and it's one that I don't make lightly. I am I do like pianos. I love the sound of a piano because it can be very emotional, very evocative, very powerful. And it's one of those instruments that sounds amazing on its own or with other instruments. And so I do like to find really good pianos. And just recently I found a really good piano and I fell in love with this. And I really wanted this to be my only ever piano that I use and I think it will be and that one was by Propellerheads and it was one of their rack extensions for Propellerhead Reason which is a fairly new concept for Propellerhead having third party plugins and they created one themselves it was called Radical Piano and Radical Piano uh, takes uh, a combination of samples and physical modeling to recreate uh, a number of different styles of piano so uprights and grands different miking positions, different effects built into it as well. But it also uh, included the sound of the mechanics of a piano. The piano is a mechanical instrument. It uses levers and uh, hinges and all sorts of manner of mechanical processes to create its sound. So when you play a piano, it is very rare that you hear just the notes. You will hear the mechanics as well. You will hear the sound of the hammers. You will hear the sound of the soundboard. You will hear the sound of the pedals. You will hear the sound of all of those solid parts doing something. And it's missing from the Urcan prepared piano. And I I don't know, it just it doesn't sit right with me. Everything else about this is perfect and I, I still will wholeheartedly recommend this because if you want a prepared piano there is nothing better than this out there without a shadow of a doubt I can make that that claim quite categorically there is nothing as good as this and I didn't go, go as far to say that this is probably better than actually having a real piano because you can do this conveniently quickly and you, re you can recall settings whereas with uh, a manual actual real piano there's a lot of time involved in the preparation. However, if you're going to go to one of the finest recording environments in the world and spend a huge amount of time on an instrument and you, you sample more than 10 or 12,000 samples from this thing, I just feel that you could have done the justice of getting those uh, mechanical sounds in there as well even if it's just giving the user the option of turning them on or off. But I truly believe it's it's a bit like, and I say it again, I say this again in my written review, it's like people that criticize MP3s say that the compression technique that's used, used in MP3s strips away um, frequencies that are either above or below the normal human hearing range because it's it was decided that, well, why would you want those? Why would you want those frequencies if humans can't hear them? But those other frequencies at the top and the uh, the bottom also affect the frequencies we can hear, and therefore it does make a slight difference. And I believe the same analogy applies with a piano. The mechanical sounds, the impurities, if you will, the things that don't actually make the music, all add to the flavour of a real piano. And so that's my only criticism 
of this particular instrument that it doesn't have that element to it. Other than that, it is 100% perfect in every way. It's, a, it's an awesome piano, sampled in an awesome environment, and it's been meticulously approached so that every preparation has been put in here, and we can now layer these preparations. We can choose individual preparations for every single note. We can mess around with every single note's tuning and volume. We can put effects on there, and we can do all sorts of different things, and we can do this from the comfort of a software instrument. Whereas before, this was all down to actually having access to a, a physical piano, plus all the tools, plus, plus the time and the patience to prepare them uh, yourself. So, in that respect, this is an amazing library. It really is. And I've had loads of fun playing around with this. That one little thing about the sound of the mechanics, I can live with that. I'd rather not live with that, but I can live with that. But other than that, I think this is a, a cracking library, a cracking instrument, and uh, it's expensive, but it is worth every cent, every penny, whatever you call it. So that's it. That's the Urcan Prepared Piano from UVI. You can go to uvi.net and you can purchase the DVD or you can download it. It's a 20 gigabyte download, so if you are going to download be mindful of that limitation, 20 gigs. You're going to need UVI's workstation, which is free of charge. It can be downloaded also from uvi.net or Mac 5.3 sampler. You're going to need that uh, to play it, the latest version, version 3.1. And you can uh, read the written review at failedmuso.com forward slash blog. Just do a search for Urcan Prepared Piano or just do a search for reviews and you'll get all the reviews there as well. And and that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, any comments, please do leave them down below in the comments section here on YouTube. Or of course, you can leave your comments over at the blog as well. And that, that wraps this one up from me. So that's Urcan Prepared Piano from UVI. $399 dollars or euros available now and uh, thanks for listening thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it and we'll speak to you soon take care bye bye